Please be seated. <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that many of you have a number of different things on your mind right now. Try to put all that aside for now. Be present and focus only on one thing, being in the chapel. I'll get more into this later. Now that that's out of the way, good morning. My name is Isaac, but many refer to me by my nickname, Big Easy. If you know me, you probably know that I like sports. What a surprise. Athletics Prefect likes sports, but I really do. Sports have been a large part of my life since I was a toddler, and I can say that they've greatly helped build the foundation of who I am today. Sports, for me, are more than just a hobby that I enjoy doing. They've done much more for me than that. Specifically, basketball. Ball is life, after all. The phrase has become a little bit of a joke, but I'm not one to say anything, as I use it as a joke, too. However, the phrase does have some truth for me, since it's been the only sport to remain with me through all these years. I can say that I didn't get to where I am with basketball today without some hardship in the past. As a matter of fact, there was a time when it looked like my basketball career would end a lot earlier than I wanted it to. In my hometown of Rochester, Michigan, sports are taken very seriously. If you want to play a sport competitively in your middle school and high school years, you have to play that sport from a very young age. Unfair, a little bit. But unfortunately, that's just how it is. Due to that fact, my parents wanted me to have that option to do that later on. They put me in several sports since grade, young, grade one. Over my childhood years, I played football, baseball, lacrosse, and basketball. Eventually, I determined that I wanted basketball to be my primary sport, the one that I would play competitively. I was obsessed with it. Unlike most sports, only 12 guys get to play on the basketball team. If you play at the varsity level in grades 11 and 12, the whole city comes to watch you play. Being a part of this team is really something special. And I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. As a kid, I would go to the games and just admire the players, how talented and respected by the community they were. It was a dream of mine to be a part of this team, to be one of those players. Sure, it was a little selfish, but I knew that was what I wanted. And so, it became the focus of my career in athletics altogether. The first official time when one could try out and play for the school was in grade seven. That being said, it was also the biggest and most important tryout. This is because the team that is selected in grade seven is the team that would be selected all throughout the rest of middle school and high school. Why? I'm unsure. Perhaps they wanted to maintain the team chemistry. Regardless, it's another challenge involving athletics in that community. I trained as hard as I possibly could, and the, and the time came to try out. I went as hard as I could, did everything my training coaches told me to do, and I thought I had a good shot. In fact, out of the 60 kids that tried out, I knew I was good enough. At the end of the tryout, they gave individual envelopes to each player, which contained a letter indicating whether or not they made the team. With my heart pounding, I rushed outside the gym to open mine. I tore it open with confidence and high hopes and read, Dear Isaac, we're sorry. Unfortunately, only 12 players can be selected for the basketball team. We were unable to take you. Please consider playing in the Recreation League for more practice. Thank you for trying out. That was it. That was the end. I would never be a part of that varsity team in years to come. My one dream and all the work I had put into the one sport of basketball, the sport that I chose to play competitively, 
had gone down the drain in an instant. I couldn't even play another sport as competitively because all my training had gone into basketball. All because of one stupid tryout. It still hurts a little bit, even telling a story, because I can vividly remember how passionate I was about being on that team. I continued, I continued to train, though. My dad would always tell me, you either get better or worse every day. I always took that as condescending. But now I know that he just didn't want me to give up. I trained harder than I ever had before, even if it was for nothing. Next year's tryout came along. The coaches, as usual, said that not everyone that made it last year would make it this year, but everyone knew how it actually went down. The strangest thing happened, though, right before the first tryout. One of the players who made the team last year moved out of state. It was kind of miraculous. This meant that one spot would be open. One. I, alongside many others, with the same goal of one day making that varsity team, coveted that one spot. It was quite a bit of pressure to put on a bunch of, put, put on a bunch of 12 year olds. However, I listened to Lose Yourself by Eminem and gave it my best. They handed out letters again at the end of the tryout. I was extremely eager to open mine, but also extremely nervous. I remembered what happened last time. My heart pounding even harder. I opened the letter when I got home. My hands were shaking quite a bit, but I only needed to read, Dear Isaac, congratulations. You have been selected for the Chaboy made it. <laughs> I could finally live out that dream. And it was just so satisfying to see that work pay off rather than going to waste. I then made the team the following year in high school, as expected. I was on my way. And then I ended up moving out of state, but that's beside the point. What I'm really getting at is that if I didn't continue to train after I didn't make the team the first time, I would not have made it the second year when that player moved away. Since then, I know now to keep pushing and to use that little bit of motivation to everything it can be. Because that miraculous moment or opportunity could come, and I want to be able to capitalize on it. That motivation can be used for anything, not just sports, even little things. I recommend using it just because you never know. I briefly touched on how I had to move away from this team. And let me say, it was difficult. I left that team, as well as the community, with the same hype for basketball that I had. I dwelled on that fact quite a bit upon my initial arrival at Appleby. It didn't take too long to realize that basketball was kind of a big deal here too. And I can honestly say that I feel a stronger bond with the team here than I did with the team at my old school. With these reasons in mind, I knew I would still be able to make the most of my basketball career. I found myself very content at Appleby. Basketball wasn't the only worry for me upon moving. In addition to adapting to the change of attending a new school and even living in a new country with a new culture, I had to start thinking about my life beyond high school. I really felt this in grade 11. All of a sudden, standardized tests, university application, applications, and thoughts of the future crept up on me. But I wasn't ready for them. I was still adjusting to and enjoying this new place. Basically, I was going through two major life changes at once, and it got to a point where I couldn't handle it. The stress slowly increased as the pressure to think more about the future increased. It got to a point where my anxiety levels really heightened, where everything seemed to be much more important than it actually was, where I tried to make everything perfect, and where each decision I made seemed monumental. The little things were just eating away at me. I would worry even when there was nothing to worry about. Two of my classmates from my old school even passed away during the years that I've been here, one of them from a terminal illness. I wasn't particularly close with either of them, but it was just weird to think about. It made me realize that it wasn't an impossibility for anyone, 
And so I started to worry that it could happen to me or someone I cared about. Due to all this, my feelings of contentment were slowly disappearing. I would go to school and put a smile on my face when I actually didn't feel like smiling at all. That's when I knew I wasn't going to put up with that anymore. So I explained the situation to my parents. My mom gave me a very profound quote. The secret of health, mind, and body is not to mourn for the past, not to worry about the future, or not to anticipate troubles, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. The quote is from Buddha, and although no one in my family is Buddhist, the quote was very relevant and impactful. Mindfulness has been a big theme this year, but for me, it's been an ongoing theme for, for the past three years. I wasn't being mindful at all. I dwelled way too much about basketball and worried way too much about the future. And it was so pointless. It did me no good. But at the same time, it wasn't necessarily something I could control. These feelings are very real and awful, as well as hard to control. I know I'm not the only one who has dealt with and still deals with this stress, whether it be much less or much more extreme than what I felt. It exists, nonetheless. My advice, talk it out and then find things that provide a complete outlet from it. I find that outlet in things like being with friends, playing video games, and even petting my dog. The biggest escape for me, though, has always been athletics. The minute I step on a court or a field, the anxious feelings just slip away, and that content feeling returns. That's what's important to find. Seek it out and exploit it for all it's worth. In fact, you deserve it. You owe it to yourself. This world is full of things that can stress you out or cause you to worry, but also full of things that provide that content feeling. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the stress that you lose sight of those things that make you happy. So instead of that happening, get wrapped up in the things that make you happy. It's easier said than done. Take it from someone who's gone through it. But with continued conscientious effort, it's entirely possible. With Senior 2's graduating this year, and moving on to university, thoughts and even fear and worry for the future may become more prevalent. I know it will for me, being that it's my last season of ball, and that I will eventually have to leave many of my close friends. It was hard to move here, but now I know it will be hard to move back. I also now know that it's important to go through things one at a time and focus only on each thing as you're doing it, rather than worrying about what's being left behind and what's to come. I think that's huge when it comes to making the most of things, and which is why I asked all of you to focus only on being in the chapel at the beginning of this speech. Also, remember the quote from Winnie the Pooh, how lucky I am to have something that makes it so hard to say goodbye. That for me, being the people I've met and experiences I've had here. Never let go of your passion, even in the face of adversity, and take things one at a time, whether it's athletics, arts, academics, anything. We're lucky enough to attend a school where if you don't succeed the first time, there's plenty of opportunity to improve and then succeed the second or even third time. However long it takes, keep that motivation and passion alive because that moment to capitalize will come and you'll be ready for it. Secondly, seek out whatever it is that gives you that outlet from stress and worry. I may have made it sound like I don't stress out or worry anymore, but that's far from true. It happens to me quite a bit, but having that outlet is so critical to keeping it under control. Again, you owe it to yourself. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Fill it with things that make you happy rather than stress and worry. Find the people and things that raise you up. Thank you all for listening to my speech. Now please rise and sing hymn number 531, Raise Me Up on Eagle's Wings.